Welcome to my video about Roman rooms. Roman rooms is a memory technique that people have been using for thousands of years to memorize large quantities of information. 1,000 digits of pi, 10 decks of cards, 44 Rubik's cubes, no problem, just use Roman rooms. In this vid, I will be going over how we can apply this memory technique to memorize for 4 blind, 5 blind, and even multi blind. So, first of all, what are Roman rooms? So, you might have heard of Roman rooms, the method of loci, the journey method, or a memory palace before, and you're wondering what the difference is. Well, they all refer to the same concept. The idea is our spatial memory is much stronger than our memory for abstract things such as words, numbers, or letters. If I ask you to imagine your house, apartment, or wherever you live, you should be able to easily visualize the layout of the house and location of key objects around the house. Roman rooms allows us to harness the power of our spatial memory. The basic idea is that we have a set of information to memorize. We imagine this information as images, then we place them into different physical locations around the room that we visualize. These locations are called loci, and a single location is called a locus. Roman rooms are a collection of loci that are strung together. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say I'm trying to memorize one of my 3x3 cubes for multi-blind, and my first room is this driveway. I have two loci, one for edges and one for corners. But some people use more, maybe two for edges and one for corners. This is definitely one of those things where you need to play around with and find what works best for you. I know that Mark, the current world record holder, uses one locus for edges and one for corners, while Graham, another really good multi-blinder, uses two for edges and one for corners. Anyway, my first letter pair for edges is NJ, which is ninja. I like to connect my first image with the locus that it's in. So in this case, I can imagine that the ninja starts off camouflaged with the driveway. Then he appears. The next letter pair is BT, which is bat. So I'll visualize the ninja acquiring a bat. He makes the bat transform into a pick, which scares off the Pokemon Vigorith, into Joshing Nadal. For corners, I'll move to my second locus in the room and visualize Boo from Dragon Ball Z. First, I need to connect this to my locus, the driveway. To do this, I will imagine him cracking the driveway because he is so strong. He's also squeezing ketchup onto cherries, and since he likes the way that tastes, he'll add some oil. Then for my next multi-cube, I'll move on to the next room, which could be this garage, and do the same thing. When I review, I'll simply walk through the rooms again and visualize the items that I placed at each locus. You'll find that it's way easier to remember the information with Roman rooms compared to if you had just used audio or sentences. A common question that a lot of people have is, how do I connect images with each other and with the locus? Well, this is one of those things that just gets better with practice. Everyone's mind works differently. So as you practice memorizing, you'll start associating images with each other in a way that's memorable to you. One thing that will help is keeping the images in character. In other words, make the images do things that are natural for them. So if you had Michael Jackson, don't visualize him simply walking to the next image because anyone could do that. Imagine him doing his signature moonwalk instead. Another question is, what if my memo isn't easy to visualize? Well, I'll say that it's always possible to visualize your memo. Even if you have an abstract word like idea, you can imagine something concrete like a light bulb. Another thing you can do instead of coming up with a sentence then trying to visualize it, visualize the image first then come up with a sentence. For example, the sentence, the ham in China made by Jack was weak but very good can be hard to visualize. But visualizing the image first could give us something like Ham goes to China where it sees Jack, who becomes weak but says very good. Finally, how do I know the order of my memo? Like in our last example, how do we know if it's Ham then China or China then Ham? The way to eliminate order mistakes is to come up with rules for yourself. For example, if I have Lasso then Cowboy, I'll imagine a lassoed cowboy or a cowboy that's tied up. If I have cowboy then lasso, I'll imagine a cowboy lassoing something and that something would be my next image. When it comes to finding rooms, you can use real places that you've been to, like your house, places you haven't been to but you can still visualize, like the Eiffel Tower, or even fictional locations, like I know Graham uses Skyrim locations. There are a few basic guidelines that you should follow though. One, you should be familiar with it. You don't have to know every little detail but you should be able to picture it fairly well. Two, 
It should be obvious and distinct. Don't use something like eight identical chairs that are hidden in the corner of a room. Three, it should be spaced out. For example, don't put everything on the floor or in a straight line. Here are some ideas to get you started. Houses, you can use your current house, past house, dorms, and apartment. But it's not just limited to yours. You can use your friends, families, or even your extended families. For beginners, it's easiest to use your current house because that's what you're most familiar with. You can also use schools such as a daycare, your elementary school, middle school, high school, or college. Workplaces. Again, you're not just limited to yours. You can use your friends or families. Places where you hang out, the gym, the park, or your local coffee shop. Routes such as the path to work or school. Airports, subways, or even buses. Video games, like I said earlier, Graham uses Skyland locations. I've considered using Mario Kart tracks. I do want to say that 2D games like Pokemon don't work as well, at least for me, because I find it difficult to place a 3D image into a 2D space. Rooms make it easier to memorize for multi-blind and big blind. For multi-blind, I have one room per cube and two loci in each room. But like I said earlier, some people find it easier to have more loci for each cube or put multiple cubes in a room. For four blind, you can have one room per piece type and the number of loci depends. Corners are short, so you could have one locus for them. Wings are longer, so you might want to have two or three loci. For five blind, it's the same as four blind, so you'd use one room per piece type and the number of loci depends on the piece type. Again, I want to mention that these are not fixed rules. You should experiment with it and see what works best for you. For example, I know Mascow puts edges in one room and corners in a separate room, so he's basically using two rooms per cube. That's all I have to say about Roman rooms. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.